This program is funded in part by, um, the, um, hmm. uh, uh, no one, okay? So, so stop making fun of our sets. Yeah, you, you people know, think this is easy? You know, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not easy being us. Previously on Dirty Laundry. <coughs> hey, if we take that, we keep moving, we will be in <laughs> City Hall, here we come. What right to sit out traveling around the earth and talking to world scientists while I'm stuck in this shit place? Have you seen that waste of a butler of mine? With me in your corner, you can make even more money than that. You can have more power than you can ever imagine. You wouldn't have to work for that slave driver branch anymore. Due to some irrefutable evidence that it surfaced just last night, I am uh, reopening the investigation. I'm asking for the immediate release of Tina Timpson. Honey, I'm I didn't kill Mel. Not the police, not the jury, not the news media. Everyone had me tried and convicted. I came this close to dying in the electric chair last night. Why didn't you? I'm I, I, I mean, honey, this all happened so quickly. I mean, it, last night you said it yourself. You were tried and convicted. You were in the electric chair. You were fried last night for crying out loud. Why are you free and clear this morning? Well, there was a witness who saw me in Clearview at the time of Mel's murder. Oh, the next town over? Yes. As you see, it was a store where I was going to buy the fertilizer for my herb garden, like I said. And it was closed, and, and someone saw me there. Really? Yes. You see, it took longer than I remembered to get there, and I knew it was going to close soon, and... Oh! Wow. Wow. Watch it! Me watch it! I didn't just kick your leg! Well, I wasn't camped out on the sidewalk. I'm not camped out. I'm backing. On what, a lawsuit? No. Actually, I'm a fortune teller. I can read your mind for five bucks. Lady, if you can't read what I'm thinking right now, you're in the wrong profession. I can read your subconscious thoughts. The ones from within. The ones that tell your true feelings. That and 50 cents will buy me a pack of gum. Swami. Isn't it a miracle? I can't imagine how the whole incident slipped from my mind. It's... I... I guess I didn't even give it a second thought. <laughs> Apparently. Well, fortunately for me, she stepped forward after she heard a news report. She recognized me. And that's all it took to set you free from a murder conviction? The words of a bag lady? <laughs> Incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah! That could be a word for it. Well, I have to go change now. Change? Ch ch change for what? The press conference, sweetie. They're going to be here in about an hour. It seems that I'm now the martyr of Cedar Falls. I could play this to the hilt. 
And, uh, Pumpkin, I suggest you go change as well. You look like hell. Abacus. Have you heard the news today, Malcolm? Not yet, buddy. It's been a stellar morning so far. I didn't want to ruin it with that liberal hogwash. Well, this headline's sure to knock you on your ass. You're kidding me. Dole one after all? No, you idiot. It's Tina. She's alive. She's kicking. At this moment, she's inside the house freshening up for a press conference. This is insane. Does she know about your involvement? Does she know about my involvement? I don't know. You don't know? For Christ's sake, we have this woman framed for murder. She's dangerous, unpredictable, and is about to hold a press conference. And you're telling me you don't know if she knows we're in on it? Well, she didn't seem to pick up on my lack of support. Maybe that's because she's planning to execute you on live TV. Alright, sit tight. I'll be down there in a minute to handle damage control. Maybe we can take advantage of the situation. All is not lost. I think I need a drink. one minute that you were going to get paid for this week, then you can just... Madam. Guys, I will accept your apology later. Now you just skid out alone over here Shut and... Shut up. <sighs> I've come here to retrieve my belongings. Guys, I, I, I haven't found you yet. <laughs> Please, there will be no need for that. I have listened to your ranting this long for one thing, the love of money. <sighs> And as you will come to realize, I am swimming in it. In fact, I have enough to buy this place. <laughs> that is, if I felt like slumming it. Giles! Wait! I... What have you done with my Cadillac? Oh, I left it over on Grove Street. Oh. And Elm Street. Oh. And Willow Street. Oh! <laughs> oh, man! Thank you very much for coming today. I would, um, I'm sure many of you have, have questions regarding the, my last minute pardon. However, I would first like to start off by saying that I told you people before that I was in no way responsible for the brutal slaying of Mel Haynes. Um, However, from the start of this, I have been wrongly accused, first by the police, then the news media, then the jury, and every other person responsible for putting me into that hellhole. <clears throat> but fortunately, I was saved. Saved by the unselfish actions of one lone individual who, for the first time I saw her, I knew. I knew that she was the type of person who would go out of her way to assist one in need. Tipson, has this whole experience changed you in any way? Do you harbor any ill feelings towards your accusers? No, 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 no. I, I harbor no ill will whatsoever toward those who truly felt they were doing their job. I was simply caught up in this crazy, tumultuous game of crime and murder. However, I have always believed that the truth shall set you free. And, as in this case, it truly has. I have now become a new woman. I've decided to devote my life to stopping the injustices of this world and carry on this torch that has been passed to me. Oh, great. I'm now married to Wonder Woman. Mr. and Mrs. Timpson, what are your plans for the future? I well, well, that I... question. Any further questions regarding the Timpson's future plan should be directed towards me. Who are you? Abacus. Malcolm Abacus. I represent the personal and professional interest of the Timpsons. What are you? 
a lawyer. Let's just say I'm more of a friend. A friend who has the compassion enough to see these two people as victims, tangled up in the twisted web of criminal and political injustice. You mentioned the Timpsons' professional interests. Just what might those be, Mr. Abacus. Malcolm Abacus. The Timpsons are very concerned about the political system here in our great town of Cedar Falls. The mayor's action, or shall I say lack thereof, during this whole trial and conviction should prove to you folks that the need for changes should be necessary and it's immediate. Uh, 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 yes, um, uh, th that, that's right. Uh, th the time for change is upon us. How many more innocent victims will fall victim to the twisted bureaucracy of this town's legal system before someone stands up and says, no more? Residents of Cedar Falls, I humbly request your permission to be that someone. Mr. Timpson, just what are you saying? What I he's saying is with great fervor that we're proud to announce the candidacy of Mr. Tim Timpson for the seat of mayor of Cedar Falls. Mayor? <laughs> uh, that is correct, fellow citizens. With my devoted wife by my side, uh, <laughs> there is no one who can stand in the way of the uprise of justice and the suppression of corruption. I defy you, Mayor Newell, to face up to the challenge or get out of the way. Fellow citizens, are you with me? And I, I, would, I would also like to add that I, I couldn't be more proud of my husband, the, the only one who stood beside me throughout this entire ordeal. <laughs> Make way for Mayor Timpson. Can you feel it? I can feel it. It's just I'll get good at this thing? Well, now, let's just say you can only get better. Well, I guess it is healthy for us to pursue new endeavors. Like you and your laundry. Ugh. It's good to challenge ourselves now and then. Uh, by the way, do you need a hand with that? What I need is my darling supper to do this little chore for me. <laughs> your day like today? <laughs> oh, well, it's not too busy. I got this pressing to do, but... I would just really like to get this chord down by quitting time. I got some lyrics in me that are just oozing to be put to music. Mm. I'm so close, Marge, so close. <laughs> well, that's perfect, Mary, that's just perfect. Would you be a darling and just throw my last load of laundry in the dryer for me? Hmm? Second thought, maybe you, maybe you better just wash those all again. There's something wrong with that machine. <laughs> oh, I have to run along home now. I've got some new butler applicants coming by this afternoon. Larry, you wouldn't like a change of scenery, would you? I mean, come on, being my butler's gonna be a lot more rewarding than slinging soap all day. Uh, financially. No thanks, Blanche. I'd rather stay here and spend my afternoons contemplating the injustices of this world and put the poetic concerns of the common man to music. Mm-hmm. Uh, Larry, sweetie pie. Uh, <laughs> the laundry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, sure, Blanche. I'll, I'll, I'll fold it and put it aside for you. Oh, thanks, Larry. You are such a darling. <laughs> I just belong home. Lordy, I am so late! Oh, damn that Ed McMahon. Who said he could go and give my butt all that money? Oh, goodbye, Larry. Bye, Blanche. I mean, stay cool, Mama.
can feel it. The club was filled with electricity. I stood casually by the side of the dance floor and watched the crowd work through the latest dance craze. I miss that life, being carefree, lost in the music of the night. Those days are behind me, however, ever since the accident. But I can't seem to stop coming. Maybe it's my penance for the way I had treated the ladies when I was on that dance floor. Maybe it's my hope of finding a way to return, somehow, some way. The accident seems as if it happened just yesterday. This past year was so surreal. Just spinning lights, loud music and me standing by the dance floor, watching and waiting for the courage to step back on that floor and envelop myself within the crowd and the night. How did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? One moment I was on my way to winning first prize in the single category, the next moment I was pleading with the emergency room attendant to save my life. I guess I should have known my limits, jumping like that. It just wasn't natural. I knew that, but I had to try it anyway. The crowd wanted it. They always expected more from me. I was their star. Pardon me, would you like to dance? Sorry, sweetheart. I better not. Maybe next time. I just love this song, though. Don't you want to give it a try? Listen, Han, I understand the draw of the music, but... Oh, well, ne never mind, my mistake. Maybe next time. It's always the same. They first see me as I was, then they really look at me and see me as I am. Why do I do this to myself? What evil, vicious game am I playing with myself? Oh god, I can't take this another night. The women don't want me, the bouncers wince as I enter, the bartender pities me by adding extra liquor to my drinks. This warped sense of reality must stop now, tonight. I must free myself from this self-imposed curse and sculpt a new life. There is someone out there who will learn to love me as I am now. Of course, I have to start with myself first. Only when I love the new me will someone else soon follow. So be it. Goodbye, nightclub. Your hold over me has been broken. I am no longer a dancer. I am me, a human being, a man. A man with his ass twisted to the front. Damn it! That's the fifth string today. I guess Jimi Hendrix isn't in my repertoire quite yet. <laughs> uh, where did I put that string? I guess Blanche isn't the only one having trouble finding good help. Oh, watch yourself. Floor's a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> 